This conference will now be recorded. All right, so we are till here. Uh, till yesterday, in let's say the day before yesterday's session, we went ahead and we were discussing what is the use or what is the need for something called as a static code analyzer, wherein we said that it's not practically possible for a reviewer like me or like you to go ahead and come and let's say review all the lines of the code that are coming from a feature branch. So if I have a feature branch and if I'm trying to, let's say, analyze my code, review my code from a feature branch as such, it's going to be really, very really difficult for me to do that. So that's the reason I get in something called as a static code analyzer into picture, wherein I am using something called as a sonar cloud. And I went ahead and integrated a sonar cloud into my branching policy so that whenever a developer raises a feature pull request into the develop branch the sonar cloud should automatically go ahead trigger the pipeline out and analyze the entire code like it should analyze the entire code quality and then only your pr should get merged this is what we were discussing about or this is what we were really talking about in yesterday or in day before yesterday's session and we successfully integrated the sonar into it now i face another challenge now what is that challenge is this let's say i have a dotnet pipeline and i have like you know i've built this pipeline out and i basically i have all the necessary steps inside this pipeline right now so this is a build pipeline so what i'll do I'll just disable the sonar tasks for now. So I'm, I'll disable, I'm disabling all the three tasks for now. And if you observe this, I am running this on an agent pool called Azure pipelines with an agent specification called windows latest. So I am using a hosted agent to run this task and as you all know the hosted agents come with a limited period of time meaning the hosted agents let's say come with around 1800 minutes per a month meaning I can't run more than 1800 minutes per a month firstly secondly what if let's say you have multiple developers in your team so let me say disabled sonar i'll save this out so let's imagine right now that you just don't have one developer but you have thousands of developers that are working so you have thousands of developers that are actually on a regular basis going ahead and committing all the code into the repository so not just one but thousands of them or hundreds of them let's imagine that so each and every one is going ahead and committing their code using their local laptop they are making sure to pull the feature request commit the code into the developer branch and etc so i have multiple developers who are working parallelly committing their code into one single repository or into one single branch of my repository which is a developer branch so they're using a feature request and they're doing a pull request and etc i have integrated sonar so i've done all, all those things that i need to do on a security level integrated sonar i made sure that you know what uh, the sonar integration is done and etc and each and every developer right now is targeting the same branch which is a developer branch in my case so a lot of developers are targeting so the question for you all is this is where I need your inputs is that what do you think will happen when each and every developer will go ahead and commit to the same branch 
what is what do you think or what is it do you think that is going to happen here merge conflicts okay merge conflicts so they are going ahead and let's say uh sorry they are going ahead and resolving the merge conflicts so merge conflicts are not happening they are getting committed into the branch they are getting committed into the branch this is a statement that i am making is that they are getting committed into the branch so what next Yeah, uh, actually we have eighteen hundred minutes per per month, right? So we may run out of the time. <coughs> Great, we as, may run out as, of time. Mm-hmm. As they are merging the changes to develop branch, internally mm-hmm. it will trigger pipeline. Pipelines. So internally, it's going to trigger build pipelines. So, is that rightly said? They are triggering. each and every time when they are committing the code to the develop branch the by product of this is going to be a build pipeline trigger because all the pipelines that we have configured we have made sure to enable continuous integration every pipeline we have integrated i mean every pipeline basically we have integrated we have made sure we have something called as a continuous integration out here so every time the developer is going to commit a code the pipeline is going to trigger and since we have like limited amount of time we may run out of it a let's say i am not running out of it so the first developer is committing pipeline is getting triggered so i am just showing you how i mean i'm just imagining that the developer is committing pipeline is getting triggered again the pipeline is being queued second developer is like in coming in coming in triggering a pipeline or basically committing a code pipeline is getting triggered so this is the second developer he committed the code pipeline got triggered so this got queued so this got queued third developer is coming in and he is again he is again basically committing a code pipeline is getting triggered meaning there are multiple pipelines which are getting queued now this pipeline will only run after this run is complete this pipeline is only going to run after this run is complete in that way if you basically see the order in which this is getting triggered the order in which is this is basically getting uh, queued up you will have hundreds of developers over a period of time you will have hundreds of developers basically working toward to, together over a period of time imagine that you are the 100 developer you have to wait for all the 99 builds to complete all the 99 builds have to complete before your turn comes in now imagine each and every build will take about 10 minutes and if i am the 101st developer i have to wait for 100 into 10 minutes every time that i trigger it out so i have to wait for 1000 minutes each and every time i will trigger this out which is not ideal which is which is not really what i or which is not really how development should go all the developments should all the developmental activities should go in parallel so there is a lot of queue time which i need to wait out here this is the issue 2 if i go for a hosted agent so the first as someone suggested is that you may run out of the time and i'm also saying okay fine we will still not consider that running the time out because 1800 minutes is yes, good enough but yes uh, we can we can say okay fine that is one of the issue second time is a second thing is a queue time third thing is that when you are basically using pipelines basically configure your builds meaning now you are using pipelines in order to make sure that you are building a code right meaning what you are doing you are building i mean what you what are you doing when you are when you are saying that you are building a code is that you are converting your code from let's say a high level language into binaries and sometimes or not sometimes in most of the times when you are working in a real time environment the code that developer writes 
requires a lot of infrastructure meaning requires a good amount of infrastructure to go ahead and build it out and in most of the times the azure hosted agents are small capacity vms which might not be the best bet for you to go ahead and let's say build your code might not be the best bet to go ahead and release your code and etc now that's the reason most of the big organizations like when you work for let's say a big organization they don't go for azure hosted pipelines because of all these reasons and also one of the reasons being that uh, there is a security concern that i don't i'm not comfortable in putting my code on a hosted agent that may be used by someone else so this agent pool in most likely meaning in all likely will be a self hosted machine when you are starting to work with big organizations what do you mean by self hosted machines again is that you get to create your own virtual machines you get to maintain your own virtual machines and you need to make sure that you install all the right pieces of the software on the virtual machine and then convert that virtual machine into an agent what do i mean by that is that as of now i do i have only azure hosted agent and something called as a default pool which is a private agent pool with no agents inside it it says no agents meaning what does it mean out here is that if i go into my project settings i'll say leave if i go into my project settings out here and if i just scroll down there are something called or there is something known as the agent pool if i go into the agent pool there are two agent pools that are there by default one is the hosted pool which is azure hosted the other is the self hosted agent out here and if i click on the azure pool i have one agent and there were many jobs that are run job meaning if you trigger a pipeline it's called as a job so there is one agent basically that is lying, lying in my pool and there are multiple jobs basically that already ran on the pool and there is something called as a default agent pool under which there are no agents under which it says okay fine uh, we do not have any agents here meaning you do not have any self hosted agents out here so what i am going to do is that i am now on my portal.azure.com and what i'll do right now is that i'll go ahead and create a virtual machine which i already did now this is a time taking process so i went ahead and created a virtual machine of a size called b2s so i have taken the minimum size which is like two virtual core cpus with 4 gb ram and i want to now convert this virtual machine into an agent now earlier in in let's say in our very first classes we went ahead and yet when we were dealing with virtual machines we converted those virtual machines into something called web servers we made sure that there are web servers there are file share servers and etc they are converted in such a way but in today's session we'll see how you can use the agent as something called as a build agent what is a build agent is something which helps you in building your code so what i'm going to do right now is that this is the steps that i will follow firstly i will create a vm which i have already done i'll create a vm with let's say something like a b2s size and on this created vm i have the operating system already but i need the softwares like visual studio because this is one of the most important software which helps me in going ahead and building my code in let's say creating or building my code and etc this is one of the most important software and i have two types of codes that are there in my project right now or in my organization right now which is a dotnet core and a dotnet full framework so i will install i will need to install dotnet core and full framework here 
I'll need to install both of them. This is the initial phase to get the agent ready. Meaning I'm installing all these softwares and finally I'll install Git. These are the software installation part. Now this is the agent. Uh, this is the virtual machine creation. So this is the VM creation part. This is all the software that I require. Now let's say you are working with something like Java. You will need to install Java JDK on top of it. But I am not working with Java. I am working with .NET. So that's the reason I'm only using Visual Studio, .NET Core, and etc. So depending upon what kind of let's say workload that you're working with, what kind of a code that you're trying to build, you'll have to install those required softwares out there. Finally, I will convert this VM into an agent. So if you see guys visual studio 2019 or visual studio 2022 right it will take a lot of time to install so what i did is that i i rdp'd into the machine and it said okay fine i have already installed this out so i'll say restart restart the machine so i'll just restart this machine so i have installed this already so i went ahead to visual studio community edition i used this particular link I said Visual Studio install. You will see the community edition of the software to go ahead and let's say download and install it out on the agent. So just like you did in your local machine, I did the same installation of the community edition on the virtual machine. So I just clicked on the download. I just clicked on let's say install and I wanted to just install a car a couple of workloads on top of it so I installed that so my visual studio installation is done so this is done I still need to install dotnet core and full framework on top of it and softwares like Git on top of it so what I'm going to do is like I'll go into the virtual machine once again and I will now start installing these softwares now so I'll say, okay, fine. Let's give the username and password. So once I'm inside it and once it loads out, I will now start going to the internet and I'll start installing all the right softwares that are required. So this is going to take about like about five or six minutes to get this installation done and once this installation is done I will need to go ahead and Convert this agent or convert this virtual machine into an agent. That's that's how we do I mean, that's that's the main point on what we do and how we do it and etc. So let's come here and Virtual machine is loaded up. So I'll just go into the virtual machine into the internet and this is something that I'm doing on the virtual machine and I'll say .NET Core. Yeah. I'll say .NET Core download SDK. This is what I need to download, which is a .NET de software development kit. And it says these are the SDKs that are available. And there are, right, as of now, there is .NET 6 that is right now currently running, which is, let's say, the latest version of it. So I can install .NET 6. Yeah. I can say run. And my code, right, the code that I have written was on a framework called .NET 3.1. So the installation was successful. 6 was installed. I also want to go ahead and install .NET 3.1 and .NET 5 because I have multiple developers who are working parallelly. And multiple developers are using different kinds of frameworks on that. So I'm installing different versions of .NET out here. So I'll say, okay, fine, install this out. And this is done. And finally, I'll go ahead and install the dotnet 3.1 so i'm installing all these three things to make sure that my machine is always ready and once this is done i will also go ahead and install the dotnet full framework so i'll say close and i'll say download dotnet framework So 
So this is where .NET Framework is and the latest version is a .NET Framework 4.8. So this is the installation of the .NET Framework, which is nothing but the full framework out here. So the .NET Core is done. I've installed all the .NET Core out here. Now it's the time to go ahead and install .NET Full Framework. So I'll just go ahead and say, okay, fine. I'll just need the runtime. I'll just download this out and I'll say run. And this will now start configuring .NET full framework on this virtual machine. And while this is getting configured, I'll just go ahead and install Git as well. So these are the softwares that I <coughs> that I would need. So I'll say Git download. And I'll download this for Windows. And I'll say the 64 bit setup. And I'll also run Git. And I will install Git here. So there are a lot of things that I'm installing on this machine. And once this installation is done, I will have to go ahead and I'll say yes, and this is okay. So I'm just doing a very simple installation of Git. And this will take some time to get installed. So I'll I'll leave it to be there. I'll leave it to be that way. So git is done. And this installation is going to take some time. So I'll just say finish. And this installation is going to take some time out here. So I'll just leave it leave it to be there. Now I need to do one more thing. I need to now go ahead and download something called as the agent file on this virtual machine. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by agent file and etc is that in order to create an agent or in order to create my own self hosted agent out here. The first thing I'll do is I'll say I'll say add a pool and I'll say I'm adding a new pool. So I'm creating a new pool out here and I'll say this is a self hosted pool. I'll say the name of the pool is something like first pool. Since this is the first pool that I'm creating for this class, I'll say this is first pool and I'll say grant permissions to all pipelines and I'll say create. I have created a pool, but not a machine inside the pool. So if I want to create a machine inside the pool, I have to go to agents. So this is the jobs and this is the agents and I'll say new agent. And I have to download something known as an agent on the virtual machine, meaning I have to download the software on the virtual machine. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this URL. I'm not going to download it from here into my local. I'll copy this URL. I'll say this is done. This is also finished. And I will go here on the machine place this URL that I've copied and I'll just say save this out and I'll say save and this is going to take like about a minute or so to save it out and once this is saved I'll just open the folder so I'll just go into the folder where it's got saved so mostly it should be in the download section and I have a zip file now this is the zip file that I downloaded from this particular link and how did I get here Again, I was in the agent pools. I created a new pool, went into the, went, sorry, went into the first pool out here and said agents and I said new pool. And from here, I just copied this out. That's it. And yeah. <coughs> I'm copying the 64 bit of thing. Like I'm copying the 64 bit windows because my architecture is a windows and I am working on a 64 bit operating system. And what I'm going to do right now is I'll just extract this out. I'll say extract and I will extract it into the C drive. Like I have a C drive here and I'll just create a folder called agent. And inside this particular folder, I'll just extract everything. And I say yes, this is going to extract now. This is again take like about two or three minutes of time to go ahead and extract this out. And once this is extracted, I will follow a couple of steps out here. What steps I need to follow again? 
is something that is mentioned out here like you have everything that is mentioned out here it's telling okay fine it's telling create the agent meaning after you download it create a folder called agent and boot into that folder meaning just do a cd into that folder which i have already done and then it's telling add type assembly type something 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 and so on and so forth it's not, it's nothing but it's extracting it into the directory using powershell which i'm already doing manually which i'm extracting it into the same folder in a manual way so i don't have to do these two things but once i have all the files extracted there will be a file in the folder called cmd.config so this is the installation procedure right now that i'm coming to there will be in the file called there will be a, a file inside the folder called cmd or config.cmd or just a grot config file that's something that you'll see inside the folder out here this is where the installation will actually begin so let's wait for a second and let's wait for the extraction to complete and the extraction is done and this is what the folder will really look like it says bin external config and then run what i'm going to do right now is i'll just click on the address bar and i'll type in cmd to open the command prompt directly on the folder you can just open the command prompt do a cd into the folder and etc but i directly open the command prompt inside the folder called c agent so this is the path that i'm working on now i will say dot forward slash meaning just go into the folder and get me a file called config dot cmd this is the file that i'm just running from cmd this is the file that i'm just running from cmd and i'll say enter this will now say you know <coughs> this will now say okay fine can you please give me or welcome to azure pipelines can you please give me your server url meaning what is your azure devops server where do you i mean what is your azure devops server where do you want to install this out i will say just take the url from https to or till the till your organization name not the project name just the organization name so i'm just copying in my case it is https dev.azure.com forward slash my adio playground this is still here is my name of the organization i'm going here and i'm saying this is the name go ahead what do you want next now it says okay fine you know what this is a virtual machine right now and uh, this virtual machine needs to talk to your azure devops pipelines needs to make sure that it communicates with your azure devops pipelines then how should this virtual machine authenticate itself into azure devops every time it cannot be logging in right like the way you do the virtual machine cannot log in so this is the issue that i have right now is that while creating the agent i have created a virtual machine and this virtual machine has altogether a different directory meaning this is a different azure devops i mean this is a different portal account as such it's a classes azure devops at the gmail.com which is altogether a different portal and azure is running out or azure devops is running out of this particular id at the rate outlook.com it's running of this particular id so there are two different ids out here meaning this is a different service altogether this is running on azure it can be running on aws anywhere on premise anywhere not a problem but this is an infrastructure as a service and you have azure devops you have pipelines in azure devops i'll just say this is ado azure devops and this agent that you have here or this agent that you're creating out here needs to talk with this azure devops regularly in order to talk with it it need to authenticate itself if i need to authenticate itself this is what it's asking me is that enter the authentication type press enter for pat personal access token this is what it's asking you right now is that can you please give me some kind of an authentication out here so firstly i'll say enter it's now telling enter personal access token where do i get the personal access token from now i am inside the azure devops i am let's say the project administrator out here and in here i have a gear icon right like just beside my account i have a settings a gear icon and etc 
so what I'm going to do is I'll just go into the particular gear icon and in here I have something called as personal access token it says personal access tokens I'll click on this and now I will say create a new token I will say this is the ADO agent token Azure I'm just giving a token like this and I'll give an expiration of about 30 days for this token I'll say full access and I'll say create I have now got a secret I'll copy this out paste it into a notepad so this is the PAT that I've copied pasting into my notepad this is how it looks like I'll just copy and add all these things out I'll just go into the Azure DevOps pipelines and I'll paste it here so I'm pasting the pad token out here and I'll say enter now it's trying to connect to the server and it said okay fine if you are authenticated the pad is right can you please enter the agent pool inside which you want to create this agent in so I have already created an agent pool called first pool right I want to provision this agent inside that particular pool out here so I'll go into the pool and I will select the pools called first pool this is the pool name is what I want to select and as of now there are no agents here so I'll say this is the pool that I want and I'll say this is fire ST first pool and it's telling what is the name of the agent that you want to basically you know uh, enter here what is the name of the machine of the agent basically so I'll say this demo VM one which is the name of the VM hyphen the first agent of the VM so I'm saying demo VM one hyphen one and I'll say enter now it's telling okay fine I'm scanning for the tool capabilities meaning I'm understanding what are all the softwares that are there that are installed on this machine and I will try to provision the agent for you it's telling connecting to the server and etc now it's telling agent is successful enter work folder meaning what is the folder in which you want to like you know start working on on this agent by default it is underscore work I'll say it is work and now it says do you want to run agent as a service press enter for no so there are two things <clears throat> agent either as a service or agent being interactive there are two things in which you can run your agent in but for now I'll say I want to enter this agent or I want to run this agent as a service why yes I need to run this agent as a service yeah. and it's saying what is the account that you want to use I'll just say enter here and now it says okay fine it's now asking me that it's now telling me that you know what the agent is successfully configured your great you're good to go enter whether to prevent service running immediately after configuration is finished I'll say no I don't want to prevent it I want you to basically go ahead and run this agent and once you do that once you configure this out you will have an agent called demo VM 01 hyphen 1 into the pool which is now online this is what I did to go ahead and configure something called as a self-hosted agent out here so I went ahead I installed all the softwares and I then configured something called as a self-hosted agent and this agent <coughs> is running from this virtual machine right now and it has something called as a work folder this is empty for now <coughs> so what I'm going to do right now is go into my pipelines so I'll just replicate this I'll go into my pipelines and I will now start using this agent in my pipeline so I have a dotnet core I'm saying edit and in here <coughs> I will say go to the pipeline here change the agent to the first pool and I'll say save and queue I'll say private agent run So I am running this agent right now or I'm running my pipeline right now out of a machine or I'm running this agent right now from a machine which is called a self-hosted agent this is what I'm using which is a demo VM hyphen one this will take some time initially because this is the first run of the agent so it has to download a lot of things out here and after that 
you have the entire procedure same the so first thing it's it's doing a checkout meaning it is downloading all the repository all the source files of the repository into the agent it's taking all the source files it's downloading everything into the agent machine it's then doing let's say a dotnet build a dotnet restore and etc and it is helping me produce something known as the artifact so it's helping me or it's basically going ahead and helping me produce something called as the artifact out here so once the artifact is published let's go into the agent machine and look and see how it looks like so it's done now i'm going to my agent machine just do a refresh here and this is the folder where the agent is configured if i go into work i have something called as one if i go here there are these three folders that i am able to see a b s s folder is the build dot sources folder or build dot so <coughs> build dot sources directory the s folder out here is the dollar build dot sources directory which is the folder in which all your code is downloaded into it said okay fine i'm checking the repository out from at the rate develop branch to let's say this particular folder called s so if i go into s i'm able to see these three folders or the the two folders in the readme.md file which is the same that is there on my azure devops repository so if i go into my repository right now these are the three things that i'm able to see <coughs> and these three things were successfully downloaded into the s folder of my agent finally the agent is running and producing <coughs> and producing the artifact it is producing the artifact into a folder called build dot artifact staging directory which is nothing but the a folder here if i go into the a folder this is the compiled version of the application so everything is now saved on the agent and now we are using something called as a self-hosted agent on our own now guys believe me this is one of the most used features in azure devops in any organization that you work this feature will be there you will work with self-hosted agents you are going to work with self-hosted agents <coughs> so any questions till here guys anyone anything till here anyone any questions still here any questions guys anyone any questions still here on what did we do so far how did you configure it and etc any questions anyone anything okay so so i will ask a question to you all now is that i have configured one virtual machine called demo vm1 and i have created an agent that is running from that particular machine so if you look at the project settings and if i go into the agent pools i have a first pool and i have an agent running out of this pool i have an agent which is running out of this pool <coughs> if i now want to go ahead and create another agent do i need or should i need to create another virtual machine or can i reuse the virtual machine i need some inputs from y'all in here so should i create another virtual machine or should i be or can i reuse this particular virtual machine to go ahead and create another agent we can reuse we can reuse <coughs> we can reuse we should be able to reuse yes so <coughs> meaning when i configure this agent i configured this agent to run as a service onto the machine what do i mean by that is this so if i look at the task manager sorry if i look at the task manager <coughs> 
and I'll say services and I'll say open services. All these are the services that are running in the background of your machine. And this agent got configured as a service onto your machine. So let's see where that is. So if you look at this particular service out here, it's called Azure Pipeline Agent. And it's telling my ADO agent first pool and etc. <coughs> this is the <coughs> sorry, this is the agent which is running on your virtual machine as a service. Can I stop this? Definitely, yes, I can stop the service also. And if I stop it, your agent here is going to go offline. Meaning, <coughs> this is the background task which is helping you run the agent. Like this, you can configure multiple services. So, if I want to a refresh and etc., the agent is again going to come online. So, it will take some time to, for this to come online. So, right now it is offline. It's trying to basically run this agent in the background and etc. <coughs> now, if you want to configure this agent again, if you want to configure multiple agents again, you just have to do the same thing that I did till now. You firstly have to make sure to extract this <coughs> to extract this folder. So I'll again do an extraction. I'll say browse and I can basically go ahead into the agent folder and extract it. <coughs> or I can create a new folder called agent 01. I'll say a new folder called agent 02. I can extract all this folder out here, extract every all those files out here. And I will do the same procedure again. But this time around, the name of the agent is going to be demo vm01-2. I'll do the same procedure again and I can create multiple <coughs> sorry I can create running out of the same pool out here and how many agents that you can you can basically create there is no number there is no proper number you can create as many as agents you want provided the size of the virtual machine supports it <coughs> provided the size of the virtual machine actually supports this out so any questions till here guys anyone anything till here anyone any questions till here okay any doubts that you all have guys from previous classes any challenges that you are facing yeah, yes, sir. Uh, you are the one who gave me the sonar cloud, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, correct. Sonar cloud. Is <coughs> so, did you install sonar cloud in? I mean, when you add added sonar cloud, right? Before you added it, did you install it like <coughs> in here on the pipeline? <coughs> uh, were you able to add these tasks like these tasks? Because what happens is that until and unless you don't install sonar, right, you won't be able to go ahead and uh, configure it out. So what I would suggest is that first add these tasks, okay? So if you select sonar, so this is what you can do. If you select sonar, if you select add tasks and if you select sonar, you'll have, you will be able to see something called <clears throat> in the marketplace you'll be able to see something called sonar cloud and just below that you will have something called get it free just click on get it free and install it out it will take some time to get installed and refresh your screen couple of times and you'll be able to see these three tasks for sonar you'll be able to see these three tasks for sonar getting reflected on your screen add these three in your pipeline in the order that we were talking about the other day and once you add it right you can directly go into prepare analysis and in here for you it's going to tell what is the endpoint and etc it's going to tell what is the endpoint in here you can directly add the endpoint you can say add the endpoint and this is the same screen again will come here so you can directly add the endpoint here <clears throat> so you're not able to see sonar because you not you have not installed sonar there so firstly install sonar onto your organization from the marketplace and then start creating the service endpoint out here so even this will work uh, is that okay like the, did you get that yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> okay. 
just give me a message if you are not able to get that okay any more questions guys <clears throat> Any more anything any any more questions here? Okay, so with this we close with the build pipelines. We see what is build pipelines and etc. And from tomorrow's session, we will be going into the release pipelines and we will be looking at different concepts like what is a release pipeline in Azure DevOps and what are things like infrastructure as a code and how can you use arm templates in a release pipeline to create infrastructure automatically and so on and so forth so these are a couple of things that we are going to see starting from tomorrow and i will need somewhere around <clears throat> three or four classes for to to complete the release pipeline so i'm looking at let's say so tomorrow and let's say 31st first and second these are three days basically that i need to basically i i need for covering the uh, the release pipelines out there <coughs> and after that we are going to do yaml for two classes and then we are going to move into the open source like terraform and etc so this is going to be the plan guys <coughs> but after let's say the next week which is like about thursday or something thursday or friday for the next week you y'all should be basically good to go ahead and you know start your job like you know this is the main core of your syllabus so i'll complete the first the, i mean i'll complete firstly the core of your syllabus and then we'll move into something like terraform docker and kubernetes these are the things that we will be covering <coughs> okay any questions there guys Okay, so that's it for mine today then. <clears throat> Meet me tomorrow and we'll discuss more on this. Thank you guys.
viewers who are sending this hello hello Yeah. Yeah. See, in this you are sending this 